Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Here's the gospel of it. Two thousand years ago, I had a boy I watched him grow. And you know, he looked just like me. He was my only begotten son, the only one that I could send, you see, to set the captives free. From Bethlehem to Galilee to the cross at Mount Calvary, I seen him laugh. I seen him cry, and on that dark and cloudy day, on a hillside far away, I stood and watched my little boy die, cause I'm a father too, and I long to be a father to you. I will see you through No matter what you do Should you stop or Lord fall I'll be there when you call Yes, I love you, I do Cause I'm a father too And I gave my son for you So I can be your father too Thank you Jesus So I could be your father too In the book of Malachi chapter 1 We told you to turn there earlier one old preacher years ago, <laughs> hey, I was listening to him on the radio, and uh, I was thinking, God, what kind of Bible is he reading from? Because he said, turn to the book of Malachi. And I figured it out later. It was Malachi. <laughs> I was thinking, he's probably the same one that said, turn to the book of Job. That's Job. Anyhow, the book of Malachi, chapter 1. Verses 1 says, the burden of the word of the Lord to Israel by Malachi. Somebody say, the burden of the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. Prophets carry burdensome words. Hello? God burdens them with the word until under the labor of that word it comes forth in strength because that's the only way to get relief is to declare it. Some of these people that go around and try to shut up saying what God, I don't see how they do it. Hallelujah. I'll get so heavy with it that finally I just have to open my mouth. That's the only way I get relief from it. I have to open and say. Hallelujah. And usually that's how I know in the spirit when it's time for me to do something or to announce something or to say something because I go as long as I can and then when I can't take it no more. Hallelujah. I know in that moment it's the season to speak it and give birth to it. He's walking in a burden. Somebody say he's heavy laden. He's heavy with this word. And notice what the Lord said in verse 2. I have loved you, saith the Lord. Yet you say, wherein hast thou loved us? Was not Esau Jacob's brother? saith the Lord, yet I loved Jacob, and I hated Esau. <gasps> I hated Esau. <laughs> Jesus loves me. <laughs> this I know. But he hated Esau. <laughs> Hallelujah. Think about it. He said I hated him. And when you think about Esau, he sold his birthright. Praise God for just a morsel of bread according to Hebrews 12, 17. And he went out and tried to weep bitterly and couldn't even find a place of repentance, though he wept for it. Don't mean that God hated him in the sense that, that we, it just means God's judgment came on him and God said, no more time for you. There comes a cutoff time. Revelation 2, 21 said he gave the harlot a space to repent, but she repented not. Read in the book of Romans chapter 1, even in verse 20, God says, I'll turn them over, I'll give them over, I'll give them up. Verse 28, I'll give them up to a reprobate man. God will never give up on nobody. When people walk through the streets with colorful rainbow 
art exclaiming we have now got our way we can now marry the same sex remember when that happened God turned them over that was his judgment their freedom to sexually do that that God called a disgraceful thing unseemly Romans 1 27 because they changed his truth into a line they worship themselves the creature their own bodies more than they did him the creator which is blessed forever amen he turned them over to vile affections come on somebody to abuse themselves and their bodies among themselves and their right to disobey the word of God concerning marriage laws changed was God's judgment God turned them over. He gave them up. Hello? When God says, I've called you, I've called you, I've beckoned you, and nobody can say when that is except God reveal it somehow. But I'm telling you, friend, this is what happened to Esau in Hebrews 12, 17. He tried to repent, and he did it with tears and couldn't even find a place for repentance. That means God had done left him. God no longer deal, dealt with him again. And God, that's why he was saying he hated Esau, not because he hated him in the sense that we think he hated him. It means God said, my judgment come. I done said that was enough. Hallelujah. All right, let, let, let's skip on down. I wanted to bring that out. And let's look in verses 6. Malachi 1. He said, a son honoreth his father and a servant his master. If then I be a father... Where's my honor? And if I be a master, where's my fear? That's my reverence. Saith the Lord of hosts unto you, O priest, that despise my name. And you say, wherein have we despised thy name? Despise just means we've disesteemed. We no longer esteem you as the most important thing or one. And notice he said to the priest, he even said this to the preacher first. And, and, and listen at the question. God says, a son honoreth his father. And he said, and a servant his master. And notice he said, if I'm a father, because they called him Father God. Think how many today has called him Father. Father God. Father God. He said, if I'm your father, where's my honor? Where's my glory? How is it that you despise my name? In other words, you, you, you esteem not the highest importance for my person. I'm not first in your life is what he's saying. To despise my name was to say you're not, you're not putting me ahead of you. I'm not before your plans. I'm not before all the things you do. I'm somewhere mixed up in it. I'll prove this is what he's talking to about. Because in verse 7, notice as the Lord accuses them. He said, you offer polluted. Some ought to say stale bread. Somebody will say, not your best bread. You're leftover. This is leftover bread. God says, if I'm your father, where's my honor? If I'm your master, where's my glory at? Where, where's this honor at? He said, you offer me polluted bread. You give me leftovers. I'm not first. You just hand me what's left. If you got any. But yet you call me father. You call me master. And Jesus said, wherein have you polluted? Or they said, wherein have we polluted thee? That's what they said to the Lord. Because he said, you've offered it upon the altar. And then you say that the table of the Lord is contemptible. Again, that's just another word for disesteemed. In other words, they esteem their relationship with God not as highest importance. The altar, the fellowship, the relationship with God. That's not the most important. Where's the altar? Somebody say it's in the house of prayer. Hallelujah, Isaiah 56 and 7. We don't esteem the things of God. That's not most important in our life. God, if we can squeeze you in on our schedule, and if it don't require a sacrifice of me of any kind, God, I, you know, if I can work you in, Lord... And he second rate to them. They're giving him leftovers. He said, and if ye offer the blind sacrifices, is it not evil? Now this is from Leviticus 22. 
God told them, and even in Exodus 12, when you offer me your lamb, he said, you're to get the best, the firstling, the male of the first year. It can't have any, you know, blemish. It, it can't have anything broken, bruised, nothing. Like, he said, I want your best lamb. Amen. Friend, God deserves our best because he gave his best, his son Jesus. And he requires the best. Somebody say, my first is my best. Huh? Listen to what he goes on to say. This is amazing. This is powerful. He said, why offer ye the blind sacrifice? Is not this evil? God didn't just call it bad. He called it evil. You offer me a leftover lamb is what he was telling them in this day when they was bringing the sacrifice. You offer me one of your sheep out there. You know he's blind. You don't want him. That's about like bringing food to somebody's house and all the cans you just cleared out of your cabinet, you weren't going to dare open them and eat them because they all outdated years ago. But yet, boy, I'm going to bless somebody. No, you ain't. You just emptying your cabinets. If you really want to bless them, you'll go get something you just got, something that ain't outdated, something you would eat. They were giving something to God they wouldn't even eat. And God's offended. He said, you offer the lame and the sick is not this evil. He's talking about them goats and lambs. They offer. Sick one, going to bring God a sick lamb. Amen. Because they don't want it. It's just leftovers. Somebody says it's leftovers. Listen to what God said. He said, offer it now unto thy governor. Your leaders that are of the flesh is what I'm talking about. Will he be pleased with them, with thee? Or accept thy person, saith the Lord of hosts. Verse 9, and now I pray you beseech God, and he will be gracious unto us. This hath been your means. By your means will he regard your person, saith the Lord of hosts. Verse 10, who is there even among you that would shut the doors for naught? Neither do ye kindle the fire on my altar for naught. I have no pleasure in you, saith the Lord. Neither will I accept your offering at your hand. He goes on later in verses 11. And talks about a pure offering. And he talks about how they vow and sacrifice in the Lord a corrupt thing. And right here what, what the father is saying, he said, if I'm your father, where's my honor? How is it that you call me your father, but then you don't honor me with your best? Is this not the day we honor fathers? And most importantly, the day... We honor the Father. Somebody say there's only one way to honor the Father. Uh, Hebrews 12, 17 calls him the Father of Spirits. There is only one way to honor this Heavenly Father, this spiritual Father. Somebody shout and it's to give him your best. Not leftovers. He don't want religious leftovers. He wants your first. He wants your best. He wants your all. That's how you honor him. In other words, he's saying, you offer me polluted bread. I could hear God saying, this is crummy communion. This is crummy. That you would treat me this way. That I'm not more important to you than just leftovers. Somebody say, daddy don't want to visit me on Sunday. He wants full custody. He don't want no visiting rights. He wants full custody. And friend, he deserves the best. Somebody say, my best is my first. When you get up in the morning, give him your first part of the morning. This is Sunday, the first day of the week. That's when the early church in Acts 20, verses 7, met together. And Paul preached all night until midnight. Eutychus fell out the window in Acts 20, verse 9. He went out and raised him from the dead, come back up. They ate and he talked until morning light. So don't never accuse me of preaching long. Hallelujah. I've never preached that long. Praise God. And, but if you saw somebody raised from the dead, I believe you wouldn't want to go home either. Hallelujah, because that's what revival does. But I, I'm, I'm telling you, um, it was the first day of the week. That's why we're assembled in the house of God on the first day of the week. Somebody say, keep him first. Somebody say, the Father's honor. This is how you honor the Father. Don't give him leftovers. Somebody say, no leftovers. Give him the best. Give him your first. Stand on your feet this evening because I still see the sun bright and shiny. Hallelujah. Holy Ghost, we thank you in your presence tonight, Father God. Holy, 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 holy. 
Lord, I know this is the remedy that'll stop the wolf, stop that old lion. This will stop all those ravenous wolves. Them devils can't get to those who honor you this way, who keep you first. Lord, this is our only safety. This is our only protection, not just from things in this world, but from a devil, from a wolf. We must keep the Father first. Somebody say, keep the Father first. Mm -hmm. The Father first. That could just be the title of this word tonight. The Father first. Hallelujah. In the mighty name of Jesus. Holy, holy. Mm -hmm. God, you said you're a helper to the fatherless. Psalms 10, 14. Holy, yes, you are. You said in Psalm 68 and 5, God, you said uh, you are a father to the fatherless and a judge to the widow woman is God in his habitation. Hallelujah. You said when your mother and father forsake you, I'll take you up. Whew. Psalms 27 and verse 10. Hallelujah. You said in Isaiah 9 and 6, you're the everlasting Father. You're the eternal Father, our Father, who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those that trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Matthew 6, 9 through 13. Hallelujah. Holy, holy, holy. Have you been given God leftovers? The only time you call on him is when you need something. Have you really took time? When you woke up this morning, have you really adequately spent that time with him today? Or have you just rushed and run about your day? I'm telling you, if you don't stop doing that, you will not make it in these end times. Because there is a wolf getting close, closer and closer to the flocks. I'm telling you, you will not last you will not have longevity in this faith you trying to scare me preacher no I'm trying to let you know not try to scare you but awake you alert you be sober and village it your adversary the devil's a roaring lions walking about seeking whom he may devour whom resist steadfast in the faith knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished by your brethren which are in the world first Peter 5 verse 8 and 9 somebody shout he's not trying to to scare us he's just alert us. Oh, he's trying to warn us. Get close to the Lord. Get him first. You're not going to last if you're just giving him the second part of your life. If he's out of place, if he's, if he's not first, if he's not the highest importance of your life, your day, I'm telling you, you won't have strength and you'll be as Daniel 7 and 25 says, as this enemy is going to seek to wear out the saints, you'll wear out. You will wear out. You won't be able to last. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Ghost. You know what they were doing in the Old Testament? When they brought their best sacrifice to God, Psalms 118, 27, they'd bind the sacrifice to the altar. They'd tie it to the altar. And it would bleed out and die on that altar. And you know how they knew God accepted it? Fire would come down out of heaven. And consume the burnt sacrifice. The burnt offering. Mm. Hallelujah. Somebody shout, when God sends his fire, that's its acceptance. Hallelujah. And there's only one way I know to this fire. And it ain't through leftovers. Is through putting God first. What kind of preacher would you have if I became relaxed and exempt in myself as often as I see people exempting themselves from the responsibility in the kingdom of God in these last hours? There's no different rule for me than you. 
If I offer him leftovers, I'll burn out. I won't be burned up in the consumed fire of God. And I'm trying to tell you, this is the key. God don't use me nothing to do in these last days, but to keep the people of God rekindled, fanning the flame. Because heat rises, and when Jesus comes, he's not coming back for religious Sunday morning daters. He ain't coming back for some occasional girlfriend. Hallelujah. He's coming back for a hot bride on fire. That ain't slothful in business, but fervent in spirit, boiling in spirit, serving the Lord. Romans 12, 11. Lord, and I will praise you, Lord. Yes, I will. And I will sing of your love come down. Jesus says, I seek your face. Lord, I know I'll experience your fire near. Lord, let your fire burn in here tonight. Holy, 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 that lets me know the repentance and the bowling fervency of the Holy Ghost and his fire, his consumer. They're connected and they're connected to the messages, amen, that challenge us to let go of things and to go after God and, and that, that call us out of places where God's not first to put God first. Uh, they're words of correction. They're chastening us. Why? Because that's how the Father does. As many, he said, as I love, like a father, I chasten. And he said, we've all had fathers of the flesh in Hebrews 12, 9, that have corrected us according to the flesh, and we've reverenced them. God says, how much more should you reverence me when I chasten you as the Father of spirit and live? Hallelujah. My God, I don't claim to know a lot. I don't claim to know everything, surely. But I do know this one thing. God will not be second to none. He said, thou shalt have no other gods before you. Exodus 20, verse 3. He, your husband can't be your God. Your wife can't be your God. Your job can't be your God. Your money can't be your job or your God. Oh, glory to God. God says, I must be before Deuteronomy 5, 24, for our God's a jealous God, even a consuming fire. There it is. He's jealous. And until you understand his jealousy, you'll never know his fire. The jealous God says, my name's jealous, Exodus 34, 17. I'm a jealous God and my name is jealous. Hallelujah. Thou shalt have no other gods before you. I must be first is what he's saying. Don't hand me what's left over. Give me what's right, not what's left. Say that with me. Don't give God what's left. Give him what's right. Give him the first. Ooh, Lord. Jesus. Holy Father. We want to honor you, Lord. Yes, we do. Lord, we want to honor you. Lord, we want to honor you. Want my days to honor you. Want my life to honor you. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. There's somebody in here. You've been, uh, you, there's some kind of, I don't even know how to describe it, but something sore. If it don't feel right, it kind of, hurts at times. It's, it's, it's under your armpit, down, down your side and, and through your arm. It, it's, it's just like right in this area. It's, 
and it's even up under the arms of them. They, they, I don't know if it's a strain or what it is, and I ain't talked with nobody. All I know is I just heard the Holy Ghost tell me, he said, I'm going to heal that. Hallelujah. Now, Brother Andy, have you said anything to me about this? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. What's that? said he told Penny, his wife, about it. Amen? Lift your hands, brother. Holy Ghost, I ask you to touch brother Andy and heal him, Lord, of this. Himself took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses, Matthew 8, 17. Jesus, make him whole for your glory. For I will restore health unto you and heal you of your wounds, saith the Lord, Jeremiah 30 and 17. Thank you for healing the man of God tonight, Lord. There he is. That's Holy Ghost. You too? Uh -oh. Hallelujah. Lord, uh, your will. Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, thank you for healing Thank you for making him whole, Lord. Jesus, 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 hallelujah. Maratabramba, kalal roma, palalalalaba, Hallelujah, hallelujah. Amos 3.11, this is, is going to be a different note about the wolf. But Amos 3.11 God said, as the shepherd taketh out of the mouth of a lion two legs and a piece of ear, so shall the Lord deliver his people. So he's talking about a lamb. Somebody say, a little lamb in the mouth of a big old lion. Now you imagine the shepherd walks up and all he can see is two legs hanging out one side of the lion's mouth and just a piece of the ear of the lamb hanging out the other side. You know what most people would say? <laughs> Too late for that lamb, buddy. Not this shepherd, not the Lord. He walks up and just snatches what's left out of the lion's mouth and redeems it, heals it, puts it all back together. And he here's, here's the faith of it. God says if you got two feet, somebody say we walk by faith and not by sight. 2 Timothy 5, 7, or 2 Corinthians 5, 7. So this speaks about a stand and a walk of faith. We stand by faith, 1 Corinthians 1, 24. Ear, Romans 10, 17, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. In other words, God says, if you can hear the word of faith and stand on it and walk in it, God says, nothing the lion has done can stop what I'm about to do. And I've said all that for everybody, but especially for you. Because the Holy Ghost... When he told me, Amos 3.11, he said, it's going to be for you, even though I was speaking around like that. That's why I kept looking back at you. Because God says, it may look like it's too late. It may look like the lion's devoured too much. But God says, if you'll just stand on the word of faith, God says, I'm going to redeem. And this lion, I'm going to shut the lion's mouth, and I'm going to redeem what I said I'd redeem. I am going to deliver. It's not too late, says the Holy Ghost. Still believe me, daughter. Keep walking in the faith because I am moving even when you don't see me moving. I am working even when you don't even see it happening, says the Holy Ghost. Somebody shout, the lion will be slain and the lamb will be saved. <laughs> Woo! Hallelujah! Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Brianna, play that song one more time. I'm not tired yet. Hallelujah. And then we're going to leave. Yes, Foxy Mama. Makes our way perfect, 2 Samuel 22, 33. Be confident in this one thing. He that began a good work, 
and you shall perform it to the day of his son Jesus, Philippians 1 6. This is a good work. This is a God work. For the enemy only attacks that that is of God, that that is the good work. In 2 Timothy 1 14, that good thing that I've committed unto you, keep by the Holy Ghost that dwelleth in thee. God, we don't keep it by those around us. We keep it by him who's in us. We focus on him in us. He and him through us. Because more they that are in us and with us and for us and they that are against us. Hallelujah. Because greater is he that's in us than he that's in this world. First John 4 and 4. Holy Ghost said three, darling. Three. Remember three. Shall I did you to boss about how